there are many approaches to API. Um, it's hard to tell uh, which one will succeed first. Um, probably good old-fashioned AI um, trying to build a system um, which knows um, to act um, from the start uh, will most likely not succeed. This is way too hard. I mean, there have been projects in the past, you know, Leonard Sick project in his huge database of, of, of common knowledge. Um, I think that is implausible. It's much more plausible that we build sort of intelligent baby which then learns um, to um, solve all kinds of um, interesting tasks. So the machine learning paradigm um, will be crucial and I think, you know, any approach without learning has very limited chance um, to succeed. But then there are still many approaches, right? So there's, you know, the deep neural networks, um, which I have discussed before. Um, then um, there's my theoretical approach, um, which um, in itself, you know, has some chance to succeed. At least um, we have guarantees, especially if you're concerned about safe AGI, right? you want to ensure safety, that means proving some properties about the system. Um, but that needs to be a system where you have, um, which you can specify um, to um, a sufficient degree and not just a big neural network, a bit mess, and it does something um, and succeeds. So this theoretical approach has the advantage um, that we can get guarantees, um, at least to some degree. Um, you know, there are all kinds of other approaches. I mean, we could just um, scan the human brain and simulate it in a computer. That seems to be the scientifically easiest problem, which is a big engineering problem to get the resolution of brain scanners, you know, better and better. There's also some form of Moore's law about the resolution of brain scanners, and I forgot, you know, when we will hit uh, the resolution to, <laughs> to scan the human brain. Um, but we can also have a hybrid, right? So we scan the human brain on the resolution so that we get the structural properties right. But then um, we just take, you know, maybe a cubic millimeters for, you know, an understanding sort of locally what is going on. And then we understand quite well how the neurons work, but there are different kinds of neurons. There's still lots to learn. And then we combine sort of, you know, the scans on a coarse resolution and fill in the details from our scientific understanding. So that's a viable approach, which, you know, maybe the first one um, to succeed. Um, many inventions in the past have been copies from nature. There are a few exceptions, actually. You know, the wheel is a big exception. Um, flying, yes, okay, airplanes don't flap their wings, but I mean, it's still sort of similar to birds, right? So they also have wings. Um, so very few inventions um, are not inspired by nature. So, um, or even copies of nature. Um, so that is an approach. Um, genetic enhancement will probably not work. I mean, we can sort of genetically enhance us to have higher IQ to some degree, but that will be sort of ultimately limited. Um, then um, we could implant chips in our brain and communicate with sort of external um, um, systems like the internet um, and enhance our capacity. That is probably the approach which um, has the highest chance of being beneficial for um, humans and humanity because we saw that it's a um, view uh, promoted by Ray Kurzweil that we sort of merge with the machines. Um, I mean, there are different ways to merge with the machines, but you have this chip implant, um, you delegate more and more tasks to your artificial part of the brain, right? I mean, we do arithmetic on a pocket calculator, not in our brain anymore. Um, we, you know, you use GPS for navigating, we don't use our own brain anymore. And more and more we delegate to our um, external brain and um, so you give you an, ex an analogy, so if you have an exoskeleton and you use it for a while, it feels like part of your own body. So if you have an extended artificial brain and you use it a lot, it feels part of your own brain. And you know, if you delegate more and more, maybe you will arrive at a point where um, you realize, oh, I haven't used my own biological brain for the last two years, and maybe I can switch off this you know, small part, it is unnecessary. Um, so that would be sort of a gradual shift uh, to becoming, you know, from transhumans to becoming um, fully artificial and um, most people, I mean it sounds futuristic and scary but since it's a gradual process um, most people will probably be quite happy with this um, although they would probably not agree now um, sort of you ask them 
year after year, are you happy with your chip implant? Are you happy with what you can do with your external brain? And yes, I'm happy, I'm happy, I want more and more and more and more, and they use their own brain less and less and without sort of really realizing it. Um, yeah, there are probably a number of other approaches. Um, you could step back, you know, and uh, mimic evolution, right? You know, evolution has produced us, so why not have, you know, there's a community, you know, um, 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 who um, develop evolutionary algorithms uh, or the artificial life community. Um, the problem with this is that we probably don't have the computational resources anytime soon. Maybe eventually we have it, but I would expect that we achieve AGI before we have the computational resources to simulate you know, a whole new evolution. But you know, that is also an approach, um, which is maybe the simplest one, right? You, know, you just you know, set the initial conditions right and you let it run and um, see you know, very simple systems, you know, you, you know, game of life, and, 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 um, which is even Turing complete, um, which could evolve into intelligent um, systems. So there are many approaches. It's hard to tell which ones, uh, I guess ultimately all of them or most of them could succeed. Um, the question is which one will succeed first. Um, there are many approaches to AGI. <coughs> um, it's not clear which approach will succeed. And the uh, question is on which approach should you work? Um, that's a big question. And I mean, at some point you have to make a choice. I mean, if you work, want to work on AGI. Um, Neural networks, deep neural networks are very fashionable now. Um, so there's a lot of money. Um, so it's probably easiest uh, to get you know, a PhD scholarship or a postdoc position in this area. Um, 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 on the other hand, you know, you're competing you know, with a lot of other students. Um, then compared to if you take an approach which is um, so not um, as well funded, at least at the moment, um, well, let me pick my approach, right, the theoretical approach. Um, so um, if you have um, interest, right, in, in, in theoretical mathematical foundations and a provably correct um, or optimal um, AGI systems and uh, the capacity, of course, you know, the, the, the background, a, a good mathematical um, background, you know, then um, that should excite you, in particular since uh, the competition is much smaller. Um, so what we are doing is in a sense unique um, and not done by hundreds of others. And um, if you think about the distribution of resources, so if there's one approach which has a 90% chance of succeeding and another approach which has a 10% chance of succeeding, um, the best way to distribute resources um, is to spend 90% on the approach which has 90% chance to succeed and 10% on the approach which has 10% chance to succeed. Um, but I think that's not um, how it is done. It's probably 99% is spent on um, directly um, practical approaches and on 1% on more speculative or theoretical projects. Um, but I think um, um, these theoretical approaches um, have a much higher chance to succeed or if not succeed in themselves to inform um, others um, to uh, get new ideas, um, or as I said before, um, it established a gold standard uh, which you can try to achieve. So I think um, within you know, the, the approaches I've mentioned um, just before, um, choose the approach, I would say, which suits your interests and your capacity um, and your skills mostly, rather than jumping on the latest fashion. Um, it's better to establish your own fashion rather than to jumping on, on a bandwagon which is already running. 